I really wanted to return this monitor, but I love it so much that I decided to keep it. This is the LG Ultra Gear Ultra Wide OLED monitor, and I truly believe that this is the best monitor that you could buy for the money. Now, I did a poll on YouTube asking you guys if I should get a 4K gaming monitor or an ultra wide gaming monitor. Turns out the 4K gaming monitor won the voting poll, but why did I still get the ultra wide anyway? Given that I already had a 4K monitor already that runs at 144 hertz, it made sense to switch things up just a little bit by getting an ultra wide gaming monitor that does 240 hertz and to put the icing on the cake oled and i gotta tell you guys this looks absolutely fantastic now the unboxing experience very similar to any ultra gear monitor is presented with the stand you have all your peripherals such as the power plug an hdmi a display port and by the way i appreciate how the packaging looks so neat and presented but the box was super long, I must say. Switching out monitors was easy. It's literally just plug out the old monitor, plug this one in. I didn't even have to change the cables at all because everything was exactly the same. But one thing I noticed right away, all the ports are on the bottom of the monitor. So which means you have to literally tilt the monitor up to see what you're plugging in. And this could be a little cumbersome because, well, some cables may jut out. But thankfully, LG made the deeper groove. So you're not going to really see the cables too much but just keep in mind that's gonna vary on the cable that you have because some cables are gonna have a longer stem compared to others, but for me, it's not really the most deal breaker in the world. But plugging this thing in, I noticed the OLED display right away. The colors are nice and vivid and the contrast is perfect, literally perfect black. OLED is one of those display tech, once you see it, it's kind of hard to go back to a regular LCD, even though you can go, there's no problems, but you're just gonna get so spoiled with the OLED display. And I noticed that right away. Now the resolution is 3440 by 1440. So essentially this is a 1440p display coming from 4K. Yes, this is a bit of a downgrade, but as a gamer, we prioritize more of the frame rate other than the resolution. And yeah, this isn't really the biggest deal breaker for me. The texts are a bit fuzzy. I do notice that, but when you're playing the games, you're not gonna even notice the difference at all. The colors are nice and vibrant. I, I can't stress that enough. It's literally jaw dropping. I was playing games like Returnal, of course, Call of Duty, Warzone, and even Valorant 2 as well. Like a bunch of games just looks amazing. And especially with the frame rate being nice and silky smooth, I take the frame rates any day of the week. Now check to see if your computer can go up to 240 hertz. If not, then this isn't gonna make the most sense. But I do have a 3090 RTX um, and the CPU is the Ryzen 9 5900X and it does have 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, yes, I am aware that the 4090 is out and Nvidia is set to release the 590, which is gonna be bizarre because it's gonna be smaller. So just keep in mind before you even buy any kind of monitor for your PC, make sure that your computer can be able to run those video specs, otherwise, Looking at specs for a monitor is gonna be a waste of money. And surprisingly enough, I hooked up my PS5 to this monitor and it's a pleasant experience considering that this is an ultra wide. And as we know, PS5 doesn't support ultra wides, but it stretched the image out a little bit, but it's not enough where it's gonna impact your gaming experience. So it, it feels like the PS5 is running natively with the ultra wide, even though it's not, it's stretching the image just a bit, but it's not that bad. And the reason why it's not that bad is because this is a 34 inch ultra wide. If I would've went even wider, maybe like a 38 inch or a 42 inch ultra wide, then it's gonna start to look kind of distorted. Everything's gonna look so stretched out, but this is the perfect screen size for an ultra wide if you have a PS5. Xbox Series X or even Nintendo Switch. I played all of my consoles on this monitor too as well, including the PC of course. And I noticed it feels like it's native because it, it's not too stretched out. It's actually pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. If you're not into the ultra wide and you're a console player, LG do offer a 32 inch 4K one. You do have that model. You have all the way up to 4K and you could do your HDMI 2.1, which is gonna equal out to be 120 Hertz. So you get 120 frames on your PS5, Xbox Series X. And the reason why I chose an ultra wide was because I needed something that would fill in the space. If I would've got a 16 by nine regular monitor, then you're gonna have a little bit of space on the side. It wouldn't be the most deal breaker, but the ultra wide just fits the desk 
perfectly. It really does. And pairing it up with the beautiful PC case right next to it, it kind of gives a more futuristic setup. Literally, this setup just looks amazing. Pair it up with the wallpaper engine. Links will be down below with the wallpaper moving around. I have myself a fantastic setup. Let me know down in the comments down below if you guys want to see a desk setup. I think it might be time to give you guys a new one. Now this is a curve ultra wide, which is gonna help a little bit so you're not turning your head too much. So the curve kind of increased their immersion. Now the response time is 0.03 milliseconds. So that is excellent. You have support for FreeSync, NVIDIA G-Sync, HDMI 2.1, which we just discussed it earlier. And the reason why I love LG monitors so much, this video is not sponsored. I pay this thing with my own money. And that's the reason why I wanted to return it because it was so much more money when it first came out. But right now there's a discount, there's a sale, and I feel a little jealous. But the reason why I love LG so much, the display itself is minimal branded on the front. You notice there's no logos. You have super thin frames around the display. It doesn't look like it's a gaming monitor at all, which I love because sometimes going with that gaming aesthetic all the time, depending on your desk setup, you might not want to go for that. But when you start looking at the back, when you turn this monitor around and look at the back, now you start to see the gaming accents and everything. So you have the red and black theme. You have RGB on the back of the monitor built right in. It has different RGB lighting effects that you all know and love. And what's even cool about those RGBs, it can actually pull up whatever's on the screen and splash the colors onto your wall, give you that nice RGB effect. Now it's not gonna be as bright as like putting a light bar or putting light strips on there, but it is nice to have that perk. And it's hard to believe that I brought this monitor two months ago. Time be really flying. Two months ago, wow. And this was a very impulsive buy, by the way. I was not looking for a monitor because my previous LG Ultra Gear was perfectly fine. But once I saw OLED and you have increase of the frame rate and even support for HDMI 2.1, this is truly a worthy upgrade. And Ever since then, I never went back to gaming on my TV. Even though my TV is good, it's OLED, it has HDMI 2.1, which supports 4K at 120 hertz, but nothing would ever beat having a gaming monitor for your consoles or even PC. A monitor will always triumph a TV every single time. But when it's time to play single player games and I wanna kick back and relax, then I hook it up to my TV. But for competitive play, like Call of Duty, Tekken 8, Mortal Kombat, you name it, that's when I'm gonna switch over to my gaming monitor. And the ultra wide, a lot of a lot of W's, a lot of dubs, Warzone dubs, Call of Duty wins, well, mm, hit or miss sometimes. Gaming on a monitor is gonna give you that advantage thanks to its response time and of course its frame rate. Now very quickly, if you browse through some of the settings here, you have that nice animation. You can activate game mode, which is gonna allow you to give you the stats here so i'm running 200 hertz right now and you have adaptive sync hdr disabled and you can cycle through some of your presets here you can customize this by the way very easily but if i press the center button again now you have your meat and potatoes here so you can have your game adjustments and you can customize that you have your adaptive sync which is basically your free sync your g sync your black stabilizer and you even have your cross here so pretty basic stuff here now you do have your fps counter here so no matter where you are you're always going to get that that uh, fps counter there so um and this is going to work for the ps5 too as well your consoles so you can get an idea of what's your frame rate i'm going to leave that on sometimes i might want to have it off depending on the game and let me go down and then you have your game reset so this is going to reset your game settings and now you have your picture settings so your brightness, your peak brightness, your contrast, your sharpness, your gamma, your color temperature, RGB, and that is it. Then you have your sound. Now, unfortunately, there is no speakers on this monitor, which is unfortunate because the regular 16x9 4K has pixel sound, which is would have been nice to see it on the ultra wide, but unfortunately, at the plug in a little headphone jack so I can hear what's coming out of the monitor. And of course you have your input, so you can change your input right here on this menu. And you have your aspect ratio, where you can be able to change your aspect ratio. And this is gonna be convenient if you're playing on consoles because it doesn't support ultra wide. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys about picture in picture. 
So essentially, I can see what's on my PC and I can have something on the side. So I have my PS5 set up. Um, well, it's, it's off right now. Let me turn it on. So it's going to give you a side by side on the both modes. So PC is on the left and then my PS5 is connected onto the right side. It's going to be booting up momentarily. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to fit the same aspect ratio as Windows 11 because the PS5 can only support 16 by 9 and HDR is disabled. But as you can see, I have my PS5 and I have my PC. This will be excellent for live streaming. If you want to monitor the stream and see what game you're playing, this is going to be very handy. And of course, you can actually change the position. So if you want to, you can have Windows, your PC, I should say, as the ultra wide. And then you have a window where your console is at, whatever input you're plugged in. You can be able to change that. You can change the size so you can make it smaller if you like, which is very cool. And you can change the position so you have it on the bottom right you can have it on the left side or you can have it on the top or on the other side but now i'm just going to have it on the right and of course you can switch things around too if you like or even switch out the sound so really nice to have picture in picture on this massive display so you can utilize your screen real estate and in case you guys didn't know oled is one of those things that's kind of sensitive delicate to take care of so it's good to have screen savers and that oled cleaning just to protect that oled display to make things nice and crisp and of course you have your hex lighting which we talked about earlier so it's going to cycle through all the spectrums of colors which it is illuminating right now as we speak but it could be a little hard to see now i apologize my cable management on the back but it is there it is present and maybe I gotta wait till it's a little darker, but I'll show you guys on the B-roll. Now, LG did incorporate some tools to protect that OLED display. So occasionally, if you turn off the monitor or just turn off your console or PC, it's gonna do a OLED pixel cleaning just to protect that OLED panel. Of course, we have the screen savers where it's gonna dim out the screen or have something that's gonna move just to prevent any burning. OLED is prone to burning. But with these tools that LG incorporated, it's going to mitigate those problems. Not to say that it's impossible to get it, but LG did a fantastic job having those settings. And, and whenever you're done gaming, it's automatically going to do those things. So you don't have to worry about, oh, let me go into the settings and activate the image cleaning. You don't have to worry about that. It's going to do it automatically. Or even so, if you're idling on your PS5 or even PC or if nothing is moving at all, the screen is going to it's going to dim out. It's going to be black pretty much. But as soon as you move the mouse or you move on your PS5, or whatever, then it's going to turn right back on. So it's like little smart features that they have. And if you think about it, my whole room now is all OLED. My iPad is OLED. My gaming monitor is OLED. My TV is OLED. Well, my MacBook is not OLED yet and even not my studio displays, but I'm waiting for that. But yeah, this is definitely a nice big upgrade. I'm putting a stamp on the LG 34 GS 95 QE 34 inch Ultra Gear OLED Curve Gaming Monitor a pop a pop a pops approval. <laughs> that was a mouthful. But yeah, this is really a good monitor. And the only con I would say, yes, it is running a low resolution at 1440p essentially, uh, especially if you're browsing through your PC or just going through websites, you're gonna notice, you're gonna see those pixels opposed to 4K. But when you're gaming, you're not gonna notice that at all. Things look sharp, nice and vivid, rich contrast when you're gaming or even any kind of media consumption too as well. And the lack of speakers really bothers me, but I know for some of you guys out there, you're gonna put on headphones or put in like your speakers, but it would have been nice to see some sort of speakers on here. And especially that LG put in those uh, pixel sound on the, um, the 16 by nine 4K monitor and not on the ultra wide. I feel like that would have been, that would have been nice to have. But those two cons aside, this is a fantastic monitor. I don't link in the description. Let me know down in the comments down below if you have any questions or concerns. And until next time, I hope you all have a simple day.